Okay, everybody, welcome back for day two of the Marathon Java Programming with, uh, well, Java Programming for Android, actually. Uh, but it's Java Programming, and we are on day number two, and day number one left off looking at Swing. We went through the first Notepad example that was part of a Swing examples download. So today we're going to go over two more Notepad examples. One of them actually is pretty interesting. It's all broken out, so it's not all in one file. One of them looks remarkably similar to your assignment. And that one, I'll show you where it is as well. I just found it myself. So I wanted to kind of break things up a little bit by going over the rest of this lecture before we dive back into Notepad. Now that we've actually kind of seen it live, I can kind of put the pieces together. Maybe it'll make more sense. The more times you see it, the more times it actually kind of clicks in. And as somebody commented yesterday at the end of the day, how do you remember all this stuff? You don't. Instead, you realize, oh, if you remember anything, remember this right here. <laughs> Java X dot swing, and then know that you have J's in front of all of the things that are belonging to swing. So in this particular case, we have packages from this Java package, just like collections, if you remember the collection stuff. And then what you'll end up having to do is pick up a reference book and then look up, well, how do I use a menu? How do I do this? How do I do that? And then all of a sudden, you know, you'll start remembering little pieces. And then the more you do it, it's like programming. Oh, well, it is programming. The more you do it, the better you'll be at it and the more you'll remember. And uh, nobody remembers or memorizes syntax in general. So the <clears throat> most important thing is uh, know that it comes from the Java X swing. And then you'll be in good shape in terms of uh, trying to figure out, well, how am I going to tr track that down? So we looked at the basic concept of the J label. We actually saw J labels, J text fields. Didn't see check boxes or combo boxes or lists, but we saw the J panel. Um, so really all you have to do is see a couple of the components to kind of see how they work together. Most of the components were written in Java, actually. So um, I've gotten this far through, and I just kind of wanted to reiterate the point about the components that are inside of containers that are inside of larger components. And what I didn't point out, I kind of want to point out now, is that you've seen it a little bit. From the J, from J, from, excuse me, from swing, J component is what I wanted to say. If we work, work up a level, we end up hitting AWT. So in the hierarchy, we still have the AWT. So it's not one or the other or both, it's always both regardless of what you're doing. So just keep that in mind, because uh, a lot of people go, well, you know, oh, I'm just going to do this in Swing, no AWT. No, that's impossible. <laughs> it's all based on AWT in the hierarchy. You're using AWT whether you think you are or not, um, which means you do have to test on multiple platforms, and you do have to compile on multiple platforms. So if you're going to do this type of development, you're going to pick up a Windows machine and you're going to have a Mac machine and uh, a Linux machine and all of the other machines and you're going to essentially take the same code, compile it, tweak it because you will have to change it a little bit because the layout is going to look a little bit different. The components are a little bit different because it's using the underlying operating system components. <clears throat> as an example, as I showed you yesterday, when I brought up the window for Notepad, my window motif looked like Mac. Um, and you bring it up on yours, and yours is going to look different. It's going to be square, boxy. Um, so, drawing a Windows machine. All right, so you do have to keep that in mind as well. Um, so, we uh, saw the, how the component class worked, actually. We saw how the container class worked as well. I just want to give you the, sort of the lecture stuff, so you can kind of put the pieces from a theoretical point of view into place. The container is what we're adding items <coughs> to. So all of the little components that we had go inside from this hierarchy here. These are the J components. So this is the J button, the J text label. Those are going inside. So we're using that add method to put it into the container. So just remember, you have to add it to the container, as you saw yesterday when I took the lines out to add it. Everything compiled perfectly fine, but the container's empty because we didn't add the item to the container. We also have to set the layout for the container. So it enables the program to specify the label manager. We're going to look at the label layouts, excuse me, the layouts actually today. And then uh, the container in terms of position and size of its uh, components, the container is going to basically be holding the component. So we were specifying basically just the size, how big it is. So. So we we'll see. We looked at the J label. We looked at the inter components in terms of the components, the events, and the event listeners. So if you just remember the pattern, 
the syntaxing part of it will come naturally because um, it's all done the same way and you'll get into a pattern of doing it. A lot of people like define all of the components all in one block of code and then they'll add everything in another block of code. What I mean by block of code is just sectioning it out. So you create all the components, do everything. A lot of people just like to add it last. If you put all the add stuff all in one section or close to each other, then you can kind of visually see in your code how things are being added and what's missing, stuff like that, the order that you're adding something. <clears throat> so we have um, the events and the event handling technique, as we saw before, we're looking at nothing more than an event listener, that action listener. Um, so we have the, this is actually coming from a different library. I wanted to point that out as well. It's coming from awt.event, and we also have swing.event. We have two versions of this. They're both pretty much doing <coughs> the same thing. We want to use the swing version if we're working with J components from the swing class. So it depends on where we are in the hierarchy in terms of what we're going to include in terms of the, invent, the events. So some event <coughs> packages, uh, classes are in the package here, which are these guys here. Uh, action, mm, action event, mouse event. We looked at the, kind of the library, but we actually looked at this from a programming perspective and looked at the source code to actually kind of see the um, classes and the interfaces that we're looking with that. And it's the listeners. So we, we actually looked at the action listener, actually, um, to see when uh, buttons and things were being pressed, stuff like that. So. Uh, and I believe in the code in the lecture we stopped probably about right here in terms of the J text field, J password fields, in terms of examples of components. And then uh, programmatically we saw the buttons actually the J buttons class of the abstract button. And then I believe I mentioned that you can create your own kind of button, the toggle button, the radio button, checkbox button. They all come from button ac abstract button. You can certainly create your own by abstracting by creating an instance of an abstract class. So. I believe here is actually where we stopped in the lecture when I started looking at this and going, well, let's just show it to you live. <laughs> so this is the uh, examples uh, that I didn't show you live <coughs> because they are in the lecture. It's the drop-down box. So we have the J combo box. If you want to see the items, actually, just um, take and uh, take the hello world, add more components to it. Just add a J combo box to it. <coughs> and then um, you can see... Um, what's going to happen. It adds some items to the combo box and you'll see what the GUI component looks like. Most people are familiar with these components because they've used them from a, you know, from a user, application user point of view. So here's our J list. So it supports the single selection, multiple selection. This is common for copying things over and stuff like that. It's a very common GUI look, looking interface. So let's talk about the layout manager for a few minutes here. Uh, so this is the part here where we had the grid Grid layout for most of what we looked at. <coughs> we have flow layout in this example here. Um, so here's the uh, example here of the flow layout where we make this. This is the same window, same layout. One problem with this one, and this is what they call the default. This is the what you get if you don't specify. Well, you have to specify the layout, but if you make the window smaller or you make a different size, <coughs> the flow of the components kind of move in relationship with the window. Why do you need to do that? Well, unless you make the window really small, you don't know how big the user's screen is. It's kind of like a website. So the layout's controlling how things are going to be readjusted when the window's readjusted. But as we've seen with the, uh, the calculator, we can just fix it so you can't readjust the size of the window. <laughs> if you do that, then your layout's always going to look the same. Uh, but actually, with the calculator, it didn't matter. The layout looked pretty good anyway, even with it, even with it stretched out or bigger. So all the components in the container are positioned by the layout manager. These are the components that are inside of the container. The container is the layout manager that we're working with. So the buttons in the above example are managed by the flow. This is the flow layout manager, uh, which is the default layout manager for a panel. So if you don't specify it, I believe you get the flow by default. Default manager lines up horizontally until there's no more room and it starts a new row. So it goes uh, kind of like word wrap, actually, word wraps around. After resizing the container, the layout manager reflows the components automatically for you. So the layout manager is handling the layout um, in a runtime environment. So the default is to center the components in each one of the rows. So you can choose um, the alignment from the left to the right of the container. So here's an example. Panel <coughs> dot set layout 
new flow layout, and then align things to the left. So flow layout dot left. So it's things to the left. Um, there's a document out here on the Java Docs that actually uses, um, in fact, this might be an old link, may or may not necessarily still be there. All you have to do is know the keywords like layout manager <laughs> and Google Java layout manager and you'll see all the different new features that have existed in terms of the layout manager. Um, you're going to want to be familiar with them because it's going to make your job easier or harder depending upon what layout manager you're using. So people like to, you know, position things with spaces and all this other stuff and then they put it up and they go, oh, it looks like, it looks terrible. And it's, it's word wrapping. Why do I want to word wrap? So what ends up happening is eventually you, you learn to work with the layout managers to find one that's going to essentially give you a um, better look and feel. So um, here's the panel. So we're putting things in the panel. The layout manager is inside of the panel and we're working with the kind of components that we're going to stick inside of the layout manager. It's a hierarchy of components, just remember that. Um, so here's the uh, panel concept, so potential problems with the border layout. Here's an example, we put a button down here on a border layout and the button is stretched to its entire, we had a border layout actually, we used a border layout for the text box, the JTEX field, text, whatever it was called, text entry or text so, so many different swing calls different than Android. <coughs> so it we put it at the top of the screen and now we used a border layout because we wanted it to, we wanted that effect. Here's a button where we don't necessarily want that effect. We put it at the bottom instead of the top. So the button is stretched to the entire southern region of this of the frame. So if you added another button to it, it would displace the first button. So the second down here looks a little bit better when we have more than one button. So the solution is use additional panels. So this is one panel. You can put a panel inside of a panel, inside of a panel. And then you made the area smaller and smaller and smaller. And then you can kind of section things off a little bit easier. I believe there's a bunch of GUI tools on the market. I haven't used any of them re recently that automate this stuff for you. So you just drag and you drop and you stick stuff on the canvas. And then it generates the Java code for you. <laughs> Most people who do a lot of this aren't going to do it manually like this. They're going to use a GUI swing drag and drop tool. It generates the code for you. In fact, a lot of it you can actually program right in the tool. So you drag, <coughs> you put things on a canvas, you build it so it looks good. You either export the code and then finish it up yourself, or you go in and edit the code and then you, then you finish it up and compile it either outside or inside of the, inside of the tool. <coughs> it's kind of like the concept of using um, Eclipse. If you think about it, Eclipse isn't Java. Eclipse is just, we're just using that as a tool to compile the projects, essentially. So, explore, if you're going to get into this type of development, explore the GUI tools and make your life a little bit easier. Uh, only problem is, is that, you know, some of them have a tendency to um, use generic look and feels. So your interface is going to look like everybody else's interface. <laughs> so there's no creativity with that. Um, so, you can customize it yourself just by working with the code after you have the base created, actually. <clears throat> so here, using additional panels. So it acts as a container for the interface elements and can themselves be arranged inside of a larger panel. So here we're going to use a flow layout by default. To fix the problem, we use a border layout, create a panel, add components to the panel, add the <coughs> panel to a larger container. So here's the code that actually would go along with that. So J panel, P is equal to new panel. Add a button, add a button, add a button. Take the frame, add the panel with the border layout south, which means it's going to come down here, so north, south, east, west. So it'll add it down at the bottom. So Supplemental reading. Here's some links for you. I don't know if these are active, actually. Um, but you can do a Google search and probably find a lot of reading. And the swing is a very popular, because everyone likes to do the GUI stuff. It's a very popular topic. There's a lot of books and stuff on that. OK, so for those of you who uh, are interested in learning more about the notepad, because you're going to need to in order to complete the uh, assignment number mm, four. Four. Good, good. <laughs> There's one uh, example in here, this one right here. Swing examples notepad. 
I built this one in class. That's why the name of the file is jpassignment4.ex.zip when you download it. If you download this one, it's this one here. Um, I don't know when I did this, but it was a very long time ago. Uh, actually, I have it right here, so I don't need to unzip it. This is going to be an Eclipse project that was created. And uh, it was created uh, quite a long time ago, but it was made for JavaPad for assignment number four. So instead of reinventing the wheel, I'm just going to open this one up inside of Eclipse. So if you download the project, unzip it, and let's go ahead and open up Eclipse. This project has everything broken out into separate classes. So instead of putting everything all into one file, which is really bad practice for the most part, it's all broken out, it's all properly done. Um, and uh, it's a little bit, um, you know, it's different, it's easier to understand. All the same code is just spread out all over the place. So we'll see what this looks like. Let's see how my importing is going to work today. So I'm going to try and import it in. So file import. And it is an existing project. So I'm going to go ahead and select existing project and next. And I'm going to browse my desktop. And I'm going to find that assignment number four. Uh, let's see. Uh, da, 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 da. Where's my desktop? Here's my desktop. That's better. Assignment number four. Perfect. And I see I have JP Java Programming Assignment 4. Should show up in the window, hopefully, if it works. And then I have a project over here. It says Assignment number 4 on it. <coughs> and see, in here I have Notepad. In the default package, I've got a bunch of other stuff. Some of the students, when they look at this, they go, oh no, that's so many files. It's amazing, though. This is the same, well, it's actually a little bit more elaborate. We have an about window. We have everything in here that's all programmed separately. So this is what it what should really look like. Although you could put it all, this is done in two different packages. So we have this main package here that's got some stuff in it. we got this main package down here that has uh, main.java in it notepad.java. So if I start here with main.java, here I'll run it in a few minutes so you can see what I'm talking about. You see I've got uh, not too much code. In fact, it's only what belongs in main. What is belongs in main? Well, notepad my note equals new notepad. <laughs> Set the default close option to exit on close. So what I've done here is basically dissected everything out into the class it belongs in. So we can look at this from a proper perspective. So, Although the project ends up being bigger because it has more files in it, it's a little bit more standard instead of putting it all in one file. So I'm going to run it uh, so you can actually see what it looks like because that helps. So I'm going to run it as a Java application because that's what it is. And uh, hopefully we're going to... Oh, which one do I want to do? I want to do... Oh no. Uh, let's do let's just select them here. It's the default package. Um, I have different versions of this in here. So here's one version of it. So it's a slightly different version. Instead of putting the menu up here, there's like three different versions of this in here. Uh, so instead of putting it up here, the menu is on the bottom. So we have buttons down here. So it says open. So we can find a file, open it up. This is a Java Pad 1.0, is so one of the. Uh, so I have Java Pad, I have Java Pad 2, and I have Notepad in here. Uh, so I've selected the first one. So let's see, uh, I should just um, create new. <laughs> Do you wish to save the untitled before you starting a new document? No, because uh, I don't really have anything in there. But you can see up here, I didn't really set a border. Probably should set a border. This is a test message of a new Java pad file. So then when I save this one, untitled has been saved. It's been saved as untitled. So I have a save as. So I can go, well, let's save it as a test1.txt. And uh, I'm going to put it on my desktop. 
So now it says user uh, bhacker desktop test one has been saved. Okay. So now I can open it if I want to. Here's test one. Now I have something to open actually, and then I can exit. So the buttons are on the bottom of the screen. I believe. Let me just refresh my memory on this. However. <laughs> Uh, workspace matches. Okay, Java Pad 2 is up here. <laughs> so let's see what I got up here. I have the menu up here. So I have File, Edit, Search, um, Help. So up here I can say uh, this is another test. And I can go um, Save. It's the same op. It's actually. All three interfaces are using the same code. It just depends which interface do you like the best. Do you like the buttons on the bottom? Do you like the buttons on the top? So this is an interesting one, though. Find and replace. I'll show you that one in a few minutes. It's actually just using another built-in object. We're just making an instance of an object that already exists. So I want to find test. And match case, oh, it doesn't really have to. End of file, it didn't find it. <laughs> All right, so the functionality is kind of, let's see, find again. Actually, let's replace test with uh, another. Oops, okay, we have issues. All right, so. You're right, you're right. It's actually starting. It's at the beginning, you're right. Uh, you know what, though? I'm hosed at this point, so I'm going to go ahead and stop this one because I'm hosed. I, I mean, I exceptioned out, so. Uh, let's see, I think I actually have a notepad in here, too. So if I run this one here, I should get that little screen that comes up. And then I have this guy here, who's uh, the main. And I believe the last two are identical. Uh, here we go. There's another notepad. This one's got the menu here. <coughs> so instead of putting the menu up here, <coughs> I have it down here so I can do, essentially, this one's got, also has like, it looks like the Windows version, actually. It has the yeah, Control nice Z. I'm sorry? It looks very nice in Windows. Yeah, yeah, so. Oh, you missed the second one I did, because you were out of the room. That uh, had the, um, had the bar up here, actually. Um, but here we go, here, font. So, unfortunately, um, I gave, I'm giving, well, this one's called assignment number four, <laughs> so, <laughs> so I can actually do this, so, yeah, I, I'm, I'm taking the mystery away, but not everyone's here right now, we have half the room is empty, so, those guys who aren't here are going to miss out this, miss out on this information, this is a test, and then I can go format font, uh, let's go bold, um, with 18, and I'm um, gonna make it here. Look at that. Change the font. <laughs> so, also on the format, convert to uppercase, lowercase. So let's take this one here. Format uppercase test. Wait, well, you see, this is, looks very sophisticated. Wait till you see the code. It's not that bad. It's actually pretty easy. So, um, help. Little about box. About Notepad stuff goes <coughs> here. iTunes, San Jose. <laughs> Website, I don't know. You know. I could put a picture on there if you want. So, uh, but keep in mind, there's a actually there's one more here. I think the last one is identical, but let me just refresh my memory on this as well. Be because I have um, running Java application, just as a side note, um, I have one, two, three, four mains in this program, which is why I'm getting this dialog box to come up. This will happen automatically for you if you put more than one main in the project. It just needs to know which main do I want to run which is why you want to keep the main separate. <laughs> if you keep the main separate, then you can mess around. Keep the base code the same. All of these mains are extremely small. They're like five lines. Keep the base code the same, and then load a different main that's loading a different thing so you can have different options and set. So here's a, the last one. I believe this one is the one I showed you yesterday, but let's just take a look here. Yeah, this is, uh, this is the one I showed you yesterday with the file menu, and the file menu has open, save, and close. So this is identical to the one I showed you, except for the same code that I showed you is all broken out. So, but this is a, a little bit mm, more intimidating to some than what I showed you yesterday. But if you hadn't seen yesterday's, then you probably wouldn't kind of see. It doesn't have to be. 
it's not intimidating. It shouldn't be intimidating. So this one here is the one I showed you yesterday. It's Notepad. And then we have a Java Pad and Java Pad 2, where you can kind of see the menus are done in here. The functionality is calling external classes, but the functionality is different. So this one is a Java Pad, and then we have Java Pad 2. So Java Pad 2 is the one with the buttons, I believe, but let me just make sure. Um, hold on one second. Let me just pull up. I'll start with Java Pad. We'll see what's going on with that. So run as a Java application. This is what I'm talking about. So if you want to see each one of them, this one that I'm going to show you first is called Java Pad. It's the one with the buttons on the bottom. Or it should be the one with the buttons on here. The buttons are on the bottom. <laughs> so what I want to do is kind of show you, and then we'll look at the code. So I'll start with the easier stuff, and then we'll look at the code, at the programming part of it. And you'll see it's all stuff you can do at this point. So you know that this is going to be a self-pane on the border layout because it's on the bottom. It's kind of like what we just looked at in the lecture a few minutes ago. And we have a text in here. Now I can probably rearrange the text with a bit of a border around it so that the text isn't so up close with the margin. So, so there's some, some improvements we can do on here. So this one is this one. So let's take a look. So this is JavaPad extends JFrame implements Action Listener. <laughs> Same as before. Our J file chooser, that's giving us all of the file options. When that little dialog box comes up, that's a J file chooser. What we do with the J file chooser is, is essentially um, built into our functionality. So here we're going to have the text area, which is going to be our data. And then we're setting the text area here to this width. And actually, we could probably set the text area smaller than the window, the frame size, and get rid of this. I'm talking about this little border issue here. And that's really an issue. It's but just that it's brunched up against. Like it's a smaller size. Ah, really? Yeah. Well, then that would be an interesting thing, which is why you want to test it on Windows if you're going to run it on Windows. But I'm running it on a Mac, and I don't like the way it looks. <laughs> so I might want to tweak that a little bit for the Mac interface. But on Windows, yes, it probably does work better on Windows because your motif is different. You have a border, naturally, on your frame. And there's no border on the Mac frame, so which is why the window comes, uh, the text comes up. So if I were to adjust it here and I ran it on your windows, you'd see a bigger border on your sides. Uh, so what do we got here? We have the new file button. So these are the buttons that show, are showing up at the bottom of the screen here. So in this particular code example, we're defining a one, two, three, four, five buttons, the text, the panel, the frame, and the J chooser which are all of the data that's going to be used in this program. So that's what this in here, actually. In fact, um, we also have a temp string that we're going to use for the current file. So, and it's going to be called untitled. So you can change the name of that if you wanted to. But, uh, <coughs> and this one's very mindful. If you close the application, I think it will probably warn you about saving the file. If I come up here and I go exit, oh, it doesn't. <laughs> it doesn't warn you. Okay, so... I just closed it. Uh, no problem. I'll just open it back up again. Um, we could, you could add that actually if you wanted to, make it a little bit, uh, make it a little bit more uh, user friendly. So it does do you on the save. So when you open one up. So I hope at this point we're kind of good at the just the definition of all the data that's in here. These are the data members that are part of this class that we're creating. The class is called Java Pad, and instead of um, Loading it into a JFrame, we're defining the JFrame, and we're also defining the action listener right, right ahead in here. So, so for the Java pad, we're going to run super. So this is the constructor. When the constructor runs, when the instance of the object is created, we know the instance of the object is being created when we run main, and main is uh, uh, main is out elsewhere. Okay, that's very good. Um, Note main's right here. Main is in here. So if we wanted to make this a little bit, you know, we could put main on the bottom or main on the top. Main is kind of in the middle here, but uh, it's okay. Each one of these is going to run its own. So, so what do we have in here? We have the new file system, set the mnemonic to N. We don't necessarily have to do this unless we want to support the keyboard stuff. It's another way of setting the keyboard hotkeys. Super. Super's for the frame. 
because we're extending J frame, <coughs> super's J frame. So super, send it the name, this is what's going to show up on the title bar. It's the constructor for the frame. The mnemonics, we're setting the bounds of the window, making the window size, and then we're setting this exit, exit on close. And then we're putting the action listener on all of the different items. One of the different items, those are that row of buttons on the bottom of the screen. These are the row of buttons that we're going to create, actually. And so new F, these are the J buttons here. So we put the action listeners on the buttons. And then uh, we're going to make the scroll pane for the data. This is the data, the text field that we've defined up here. So, and that's the good thing about um, Eclipse, is all you have to do is highlight it and go look and see, well, where is it? Here it is. <laughs> I can find where it's been defined. Um, the J panel panel, new J panel, panel add, scroll to it, panel add this, add that, add that. So we created the J panel, and then we've added the components to the J panel. And then we're going to set the context view to the panel. And what do we put in the panel? Well, we put in the panel we have a scroll panel, so J scroll panel scroll that's going to have the text. It's going to be equal to a note J scroll panel data, which is going to be our text field. And then we have the regular pane, and the pane is going to essentially have our buttons in it. And then we're going to set to visual, a set vis visible to true, make it make it true. Add the pane to the set context pane. So we're building our hierarchy of components, as I mentioned before. This is just loading our new instance of our JPAD window. So then we have all of the functionality for up here for the action listener. So we have for each one of the action listeners, we're going to have functionality that's going to work for new, save, save as, open, and exit. So in terms of the action listener, this, down here we're going to have methods that we're going to run that are defined outside of the action listener which is more standard in terms of the way you're going to do it so we have a method that says new file, save file, um, exit and it's just working with the options that we're going to do so integer save file it's going to be equal to j option pane dot show confirmation dialog how are you going to know about that? you're going to look at the option pane you're going to look at the methods that are associated with to figure out, well, what are the parameters that I need to add into this method to get the options to show up correctly? So I have a title here that's going to show up in the window. Do you wish to save? Um, I am going to have the current file name in there. And I'm going to have a yes, no, cancel option that's going to show up in the dialog. And this is a dialog. Remember we looked at the dialogs very late yesterday at the very end of the day. It's just going to be another dialog that's a built-in functionality that we get. Depending upon what the user enters in, the buttons are associated in the dialog to 0, 1, 2, or they have uh, numbers associated with it. If it's 0, it's save. So we're going to run save file. And we're just going to call the method. Um, on the save file, we're <coughs> going to, and I'm, I have some stuff today on file I.O. that I'm going to show you, so we'll hold back still on the file I.O. Uh, string file, which is really simple actually, string file will get the data dot get text, get the text from the text field, and load it up into the string. Well, what is text? It's just string. It's just a string. Um, we have a file writer out. It's going to be an object to represent the output stream that we're going to create. We're going to out.write the, fi the file data, which is the string that we have obtained. And then we're going to close the file. So file open, write, close. So essentially what we're going to do. But we're going to have another one that's going to open the file for us. So, And then we're going to show another message. So we have another dialog that we're going to show. And then we're going to do some exception handling. I'm going to talk about exception handling today as well. Um, so we're going to do um, a little dialogue that comes up. Exception handling is fairly, I think it's our next topic actually, which is fairly simple. So this was the uh, save file, then we have a save file as, and uh, open file, and uh, it, it, I can stand here all day and read the code too, but you know what? It's better for you to play around with it. And these are really cool, and you can say, hey, I made this really sophisticated program, 
overnight, you know. But, but you know what, though? When you do play with it, you end up reading it, and you end up, like, changing the syntax, change, change the background color of the window. Uh, put an image in your About box. Do some stuff to it to customize and make it yourself. Practice your Java writing skills. And, you know, actually, believe it or not, if you're the type who learns by example, excellent learning experience. But until you actually do it, it doesn't matter if I read this to you. You're not going to get it. You have to actually start doing it, start playing with it. But this is a, you know, something, this particular, these examples here are pretty sophisticated. So, I mean, they're not like, hello world. So at least you'll have something fun that you can show your friends. And, hey, look what I made in my Java class, you know, um, which is uh, a lot, you know, a lot more bad. I, I was going to say that's a really bad way of saying it. A lot better than a Hello World program, but it is about the same difficulty of Hello World if you think about it. <laughs> it's just putting the pieces together. Swing is not hard at all. Swing is easy. Get this. Now we have on the bottom, because we put the action listener on all of these buttons here. So here we say, uh, here's our one, two, three, four, five action listeners. And down here on the bottom, we added the action listener. So on the bottom, it's very common to see it this way. Put all the buttons. You can do them all separately if you want, or you can put them all together. So here we have the action performed on the action event that's coming through. We're taking the event, which is we're, we're getting this automatically from the GUI. So when the user clicks on something, it's going to trigger an event, send it to the action performed, which is going to be called when the listener. This is just nothing more than an interface that we're implementing from Action Listener. We're going to take the source and we're going to get the source. If the source is going to be open, save, save as, exit, new file. How do we know what the source is? Because we put it on the buttons here. We put it on N at new F, save, save as, open, exit. That's the source that we put the Action Listener. We added the Action Listener to this. So this is the action listener that we're going to get back out of here. Here's It's just in the reverse order. So new F, exit, save as. That's usually a common area when people start looking. How come it's not happening? We'll check to make sure you put it on the right one and when the action listener comes in you're checking for the right button. So this is basically just going to run these other methods that we created. So this one here is the one with the buttons. It has everything in the code in the file itself. The one that's called Notepad is the one that has the separate main that I showed you, I believe. So let's move on to Java 2. <laughs> so this was the this was I think, you know, I don't know. I kinda like the buttons on the bottom. It looks different than Notepad. So if I run the uh, Java, so that was Java Pad. So let me look at Java Pad 2. This will go a little bit faster only because it's done on there's a lot of similarity among all of these here. So uh, let's run Java Pad 2. And let's see what happens with this. This is the one that you're going to like because of the search and find features. Then it has a help with the about box in it. So we have Java Pad, a simple editor <laughs> written in Java. Okay. <laughs> okay button. <coughs> File open, edit. Cut, copy, paste. So the, the what's unique about this one is the edit, cup, copy, the search. This one doesn't do the fonts, by the way. Uh, the other one does. So well, we'll see that in a few minutes. So if we take a look, a brief run through on the code. Um, we didn't put the action listener extension on the entire frame. We put uh, what, what we did with the other one because remember the buttons were on the bottom of that frame, and we kind of built it all in one kind of unit. This one's separated out because we have a menu. We're going to put the action listener on the menu items because we don't care what happens when the user clicks in there. Um, and we're not listening on the frame. So we are extending, we're extending frame here, actually. So Java 2 extends frame. Java 1 extends J frame. So that's what I was trying to tell you. We have frame and we have J frame. One's coming from AWT. The other one's coming from Swing. What does it matter? Well, Swing is more cross-platform compatible. The other one isn't. So yours is going to look different, completely different than mine, actually, for this one. Um, because you're working on the underlining Mac Microsoft Foundation classes that's going to be extended from AWT from a C++ perspective, not written in Java. 
JFrame is written in Java. It's going to be working on the window motif that's going to be particular to Java. So some people liked the frame because it's going to give you a Windows motif. It's going to work on the underlining classes that's coming from the operating system. It's very dependent on the operating system. So you're going to get a more Windows look on this if you're on a Windows machine. As you can imagine, I've got, well, actually it looked the same, but I do have a border on this one here. See on the side, it's hard to see it, but there is a border, a little bit of a border. The other one didn't have a border. The motif is slightly different. This is actually more Mac looking than the other one was. So, you don't have a scroll bar too. Right? I do have a scroll bar. It's going to happen. But I don't believe that scroll bar is going to happen unless I have to. Oh, there we go. See? But this is what? This is Mac. Very Mac looking. So, which is, I didn't have the scroll bar on the other one either. But yeah, you're right. This is why the border is here. It's not because the window is different. It's because of the scroll bar space that was left. But this is the motif that looks like. I had a scroll bar on the other one too, but I didn't have this look. The scroll bar shows up differently. So, actually, because it's J frame, it probably is going to look the same because it is working on top of AWT. So, I don't know. Long story short, we can have different options. <laughs> so, we're going to use this one. Is working from, if you look at the includes at the top, I have AWT up here, AWT event. On this one over here, the last one we saw, it says swing, Java X swing. But we're still using the AWT event on this one. So you can mix and match, use them both together, use them both separately. But this is the difference with this one here. It's we're extending frame. Okay. Properties, property, new properties, system.getproperties. So I'm getting the properties from the system. We're going to use that one for the file separator. So property.getproperty file separator. We're using the underlying. Uh, operating system. So if I go file new, oops, file open, let's do file open. I get this. That looks exactly like it does on my MacBook. <laughs> if I were to go into Finder and look at it, it looks, but this is AWT. Yours is going to look like it does on your Windows system. Yeah. Different than the other one, the file chooser that we opened up. The file chooser is JFrame with file chooser, which is J file chooser, which is running from the Java version of the file chooser. This is the real file chooser. So, point I'm trying to make here is that this using frame and AWT is going to give me more operating system specific motif, Windows motif. When I say motif, I mean same border style, same color, same tools. Um, skin. 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 Skin is another word for motif. Motif is an old, old uh, Windows term. I didn't realize that until recently. So what do you mean by motif? They used to call it motif. Now they call them skins. <laughs> Um, styles. I don't know. You know, if you're if you're a Linux person, you know motif because in Chrome we have motif as a concept for changing the. You know, you can have buttons on the windows. You cannot have buttons on the windows. You can actually specify what kind of motif you want on your window, because you know you're in Linux and you want to do that because for Chrome, for KDE and stuff like that. But Windows, you just get whatever they give you. You can't specify your your motif. Anyway, long story short. Um, let's go back to this. Um, so set layout, new grid, grid view layout, uh, set visible to false, set the size. Don't necessarily have to go through all this because it's going to look extremely similar at this point. So save file dialog 1. It's going to be equal to new AWT file dialog. File dialog is going to be different for different systems, but that's the file dialog we're getting from the underlining. And AWT stands for Abstract Window Toolkit. It's the abstract window that runs on top of the natural window of the operating system. So it's an abstract class that's created that it's being modified through further inheritance through the hierarchy of this, uh, not, I shouldn't call it swing, but the graphic libraries, I should say. Uh, set mode to file dialog save, which is going to be the most. So we have open mode, save mode, search mode, find mode, save as mode. Set the title of the window to open. So we're gonna we're, we're gonna essentially work with the the file dialog to set the properties here. Set the title to 
JPAD Untitled, which is the title of that window that shows up. We're also using the Find and the Replace features of the operating system as well. Um, M underscore find replace is going to be equal to new find replace for the text area. And it originally set to no text selected. Um, set the label here for menu one. So we're going to use a menu here. We're going to set the label. We have the menu. Do we have the menu specified up here? I don't believe we do. We specify the menu later on, but we specify the menu items up front. <laughs> and then we create the menu. It doesn't matter what order you do this in. So we're specifying all these menu items which is why this is kind of long. What are we doing? We're setting a label, we're adding it, and we're creating the menu item. So here, I'll just take a look at this one here as an example. AWT menu. Then we're going to add the menu. We're going to create the menu item. And then we're going to add it to the menu item. So we have the edit menu, the save menu. Here's the save as menu. So the menu item, and then we add the menu. We create the menu, add the menu items to the menu. Same thing we saw yesterday, actually. And this we can actually kind of skip. It's the, the smart key, the symbolic keys that are associated with the menu items. In fact, if you look up here, you see this is, uh, oh, not this one. Uh, it's not on the menu, on my version of it. Sometimes it shows, like, control something or other, control this, control that. Uh, it's the shortcut keys that you're going to use optional these days. Everyone has a mouse, so. Here is a string title. This set the title. Here's our main, and this is a depreciated. Uh, this is depreciated. So you might see this occasionally. You see the line slash underscore. It's because it's depreciated, they want you to run the new method that's associated with this. The method actually is a, a Java depreciated show, so. Method to, well, new Java pad. I should probably create an instance of this like I did in the other examples and have done the same thing. So this one's just using a different way of doing it. So it's the old style. The example is actually kind of old. Um, so then we have strings to represent all the different subcomponents that we're looking at. And then down here, so up here are all the components, the nitty gritty little pieces of information, the menu items and the components. And then we can create the containers. And the containers are going to be the file dialog for save file dialog, open file dialog. We have the text area, all coming from AWT. This entire example does not use Swing. Um, and uh, once we do that, then we're going to add the menu items. So underneath we have the menu bar, menu, menu item. All the words, all the <coughs> ways of doing it are all the same. So when you do the assignment, you can do it in Swing, you can do it in AWT. I don't care how you do it. Um, actually, it doesn't really matter to me. It doesn't matter to you either. It's all the same stuff. It's just, are you going to put a J in front of it? And which library you're going to import? Kind of thing. Um, this one has a lot of stuff in here because of the find and the search features. Um, it's just essentially going to do the copy and paste as well. Nothing more than taking get selected text, copying it to a temporary variable if we're going to clip you know, you copy paste, putting it in, changing the text area with the behavior of the text that's either going to be taken from the text, you know, read from the text view, text area, written to the text area, uh, manipulated somehow. So, new action down here on the bottom, set the title, set the text area. So, when we create a new program, the new action is going to essentially just Basically, clear out what's in the text area, set the title. See so if you notice up here we have the title that's showing untitled. So if we open something, it'll show with a new name. So we've done or created a new one. So if we go up here, file new, we've got untitled. I don't believe we can, uh, well, we can do a save as. We have the save as from the underlying operating system that shows up. So if you're looking for a more realistic motif, it's really the same code. It's just done in a different. It's done with AWT instead of instead of J Swing. I mean, excuse me, instead of Swing. Our save, our open. It's the same stuff all over again. <laughs> so, our cleanup and close. Uh, it's going to dispose. This dispose is kind of like the. Um, oh, it's kind of like the way of doing garbage collection automatically. 
getting rid of old uh, memory that's been reserved for different objects of instances that we've opened up and used um, throughout the entire life of the program. Not the big, it's kind of like pack actually. Pack, it does a dispose automatically. So we can use a pack, we can use a dispose. You can leave it out, the program will work just fine. Occasionally it does leave garbage behind. Um, you know, if you have opened up a large file and it's being stored in something, a temporary memory or something. So free the system resources, close the application. This is going to be in the cleanup and close, which is going to be called on the exit. So exit is going to call this method. The find method, uh, the find again method. Um, so all of the different options that are part of the menuing system are all down here. Window closing, interaction one, window closing, all of the different events that are going to occur here for, these are different classes actually that are being created for all of the different options. So That one is Java 2. Close this one here. Uh, let's see. The next one is actually the one that's going to use all of those files that are all over the place in this project, but let me just make sure. It's going to be the main one. And so this one's, and we have the notepad, the other one, which we've already seen yesterday. So this is really um, the last of the new ones that we haven't seen yet. And here it is here. So we have the file. This is the one that looks like this one here that has all of the different command things in the menu. So, and it's also the one doing the format for you. So it's doing the format for the font using font chooser here. It looks like very Mac-ish. So. so this one here is um, going to be in our main. So this one here is the one that's called notepad by the way I believe. Let me just make sure. Yep, notepad main. So let me just check here. <coughs> Okay, so in the notepad one, the package is going to be notepad. So the dead giveaway, if you click on um, if you click, click on this package here, these are all of the files that are associated with the, the one that's called notepad. Um, that's going to be essentially our main, which is, excuse me, there's our main here, inside of the package notepad. And this is using JFrame. So what we're doing here is we're taking notepad. So notepad.java is the main driver for this. So here's notepad right here, all in the same package, by the way. So I'm going to close this one here, look at notepad for a moment. It's using AWT border layouts, which is going to be the layout that we're using. And then the interesting part here is we just included everything manually instead of just going asterisk on it. <laughs> She can see all the different components. Probably easier just to go out to swing dot asterisk, maybe. You know. But it's kind of showing you it's mostly AWT with swing. So it's a combination of both. So one of them was just AWT, the other one was just swing. This one's a combination of both. And this one's all broken out into separate files, which is all in the in the package for notepad here. There's another one that's notepad that's broken out here. Notepad 2 actually is the the one that's out there, I believe, but let me just take a look here. Now they're both called Notepad, but one of them's in this package and the other one's in this package over here. So, which is how they're being separated. Um, so I don't really have to spend too much time on this. I just want to show you how things are broken out, because uh, we've already seen this code about four times already. It's the same code all over again. Uh, notepad extends JFrame implements action listener. We're creating a container C, a JScroll panel, and a text area. So we're just going to create objects of these items here, a menu bar, and then a menu for file, a menu item, menu item, menu item, menu item, menu item, menu item, and then we're uh, going to create a menu item for help, a bunch of menu items, undo, object, undo manager for undo, a UI manager for look and feel, find, and then lo and behold, here's our constructor. <laughs> Our constructor is doing the same as before, sending super with the title, because we're extending JFrame. JFrame takes a title in terms of its super constructor. And then we're going to try. What I'm going to try, UI manager set look and feel with the UI manager to get system look and feel 
class name in terms of the method. So it's getting the look and feel from JFrame for JFrame using swing. It's getting the look and feel. So we're passing through JFrame and we're going to AWT to get the look and feel of the host operating system when we make the motif for it, when we make the window. So instead of going the AWT route 100%, we're using swing and we're doing a bypass method through a method that's going to get the look and feel of the underlying operating system to give us an AWT. Why do we want that? Because we want the functionality of this J swing. Excuse me, of swing. I was going to say that. <laughs> so it's a tongue twister by the end of the day. Anyway, so then we're going to set the properties for all of these different items that we've done. And then we're going to set the menu bar up. And then we're going to have all of the different items for the menu bar all of the different items for the edit, paste, and find, and all, a bunch of menu items and a bunch of things that we're going to put in here and that convert for the upper and the lower case. This one is the one with all of the features that are associated with it. And then lo and behold, down here on the action perform, we're going uh, to we're going to do it all together again and we're going to call the file close, file exit, file undo, file paste, Look at this. We have all of the action forms together, action performed together. That's going to give us all of the different components that we're going to run here in terms of methods. So they're all running methods. So if we took it to take a look at this help about method, we can go in here and say, well, where is help about? I believe it's the method that is, let me see where I'm looking for the method actually in here. I've highlighted it so I can kind of it's not going to be up here. I think it's going to be down below. But let me just see. Uh, nope, 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 nope. Further down. I guess I could do a search on it. I'm looking for help about at the end, the very end. Very uh, look at that the very end. <laughs> uh, ABT window set visible to true. ABT. Let's take a look at that one. It's going to be FC window. Uh, let's see. This code is hard, so uh, it's because it's so long. Where are we setting the window? I want to see the window. Uh, it is. That's the window, but I'm trying to find the call that makes the instance of about.java. Well, here it is. Uh, new about this. Okay, so I was doing all that searching so I can find you how the logically works here. Rather than putting all of the menus excuse me, rather than putting all of the building of all of the code for all of the functionality all in one file, because this one's pretty big to begin with, I wanted to show you this one because I opened up the about. We have a class in here called about.java. ABT about Java. <laughs> it's going to be a new about this. A new about this is a new about. This is the about. So here's the code for the about box. The about box is this little window here that comes up. So we separated out the functionality. You see we have find, font chooser. Um, don't have too many items. Some of it was pulled out. Some of it's inside of it. We have another one here that has everything pulled out. This one's like partially pulled out, partially not pulled out. But when we click on about, we're making this new instance here from the menu item. So what we're doing then is in notepad, same package. We have, again, the same kind of imports are coming through with a combination of AWT and Swing. And we're creating a new JFrame about Notepad. And uh, we're going to have Notepad sample. We're going to create a new instance of the window. Then we're going to have a J button. And then on the uh, constructor that's being created for this window, we're going to set the we're going to set the text of the about to this. This is just HTML text that's been put in here. Put an image on there. I don't think I have the image working, actually, which is kind of interesting. Probably pulled the image out. Uh, and then uh, using an image icon. Actually, I don't have it in the project, which is uh, interesting. I should load it into the project so it would load into the window. Um, and then uh, we're just basically setting the window properties.
So we're opening up each one of the separate windows, not each one of them, but here's the find. I'm not going to go through all of it because it's kind of boring at this point, but uh, here's the find window. So we broke the code out into the separate objects that are going to be called from the menu choices to open up the different windows which is um, an interesting way of doing it to kind of break out the abstraction. If we look at Notepad, which I believe is our last one, it's the same kind of concept as this one. The last one here in the default package, Notepad. It's the one that looks like the example I showed you yesterday. In fact, I think it is actually the same one, but all the code is broken out. <laughs> So, plus we added a dialogue. Uh, let's see. So this is very similar, um, if not identical, to what I showed you yesterday. Um, except that when we go to run the items, and you can read through all of the, all of the comments that are in here. Um, on the action performed, we are opening up new J. Oh, we are actually opening up most of the open and the save. Save show dialogue. We have the about dialogue that's being opened externally. We have the find dialogue that's being opened up externally. We have everything broken out. So instead of putting it all into one file, we're calling it. And so what we can do then here is easily figure out, well, here's the quit dialogue. Oh, this one does have the quit. So I knew one of them had that. Let's see the quit dialogue. Did I close it already? Let me open this up one more time. If I put something in here and then I go file close. Nope, it's on the quit. Alright, let me try that again. Of course the uh, the logic's not working the way I want it to work. Oh, okay, forget it. <laughs> one of them, and maybe I've commented it out or something in the code, one of them gives you, if you hadn't saved the file yet when you quit out of the program, the quit dialog is supposed to come up. In fact, here's the quit, quick, quit dialog is supposed to come up and notify, hey, you haven't saved the contents of the file yet, would you like to save it now? <laughs> and then it's supposed to come, it's supposed to prompt you for that, so notifies you. Okay, does the other one do it? I thought this one did it. The other one is using it? So, okay, very good. Alright, so um, this is the help file for the program number four. And it is, again, for those people who are looking for who came in a little bit late, it's very useful, actually. It's the one that's going to be out here that's going to say Swing Examples Notepad. It's the JP assignment 4exzip when you download it. That's the one that's going to be the most fun to play with, although we also have the examples that I gave you um, yesterday in the Swing programming. Questions, comments, or concerns about Notepad? Now that we've seen five different versions of it, yes? So the third one, we, when we saw that, the first one was actually extending JPEG. Second one was, second one was AWT. extending AWT. So the difference was actually it was invoking the skin of the current The skin, OS. but not only that, but the functionality. AWT is talking to, if you're on a Windows system, it's talking to the MFC Microsoft Foundation classes, which is the open library for extensions for Windows development. And we have COCA on the MacBook. So AWT on the Mac is going to look at the COCA Foundation library, or MFC on your system. And it's going to work directly with the underlying, it's inheriting from those objects, from the open interface that the operating system provides for developers. Um, and it's working directly on that. The J frame is not working on that. It's got its own definition for everything. So the window motifs look different, the dialogues look different, because it's Java. It's not MFC or COCA. But, but in your third example... Mm -hmm. uh, There's a combo in the third. Yeah, it's yeah exactly. Yeah. Yeah, that's what I was trying to understand because you're extending JPEG, mm -hmm. but you're importing AWT. Yeah, it's basically to show you you can use both simultaneously. So the first example used JFrame, the second one used AWT, the second two 
third and fourth both use a combo of A, W, T, and J frame together. And one of them uses the A, W, T on a fine search operating system for operating system functionality for fine search, replace, cut, all that other stuff is from A, W, T because it's going to be different for your system because you're going to be using the fine from a Windows system versus a COCA system. And uh, the last one, I believe, uses the, the menuing system for um, the different menuing system, but I can't remember actually at this point. So I, and one of them plays around with the menuing system. It has the menuing system in the window versus the menuing system out of the window. So I know that there's the two menus for notepads are in two different locations. Because so, a lot of people don't want to, you know, you can create a menu that doesn't run out here, creates in the window, which is one of them. I believe it's the last one. Let me just check real quick, actually. I still have it open. So, um, Oh, this is the last one. No, no, no. I think it's this one, actually. It's the third one in the list. Puts the menu here. This is Coca, actually. This is an old... If you're familiar with Max prior to OS X, this is the old style 9 version. Of Coca menu. This is a very old library, actually. It's extending off of a very old Coca library. So if you're if you've been using Max for a very long time, that should look very familiar to you. <laughs> totally different with with Mountain Lion and actually from about well OS X. This is nine and below. Yeah. The shortcut is on that menu. Does that work? I mean, like. Does it work? Should work. Let's see. This is. A test. I'm going to highlight uh, is a, and I'm going to go. Which one do I need to do for cutting? As a cut is a control X. Oh no, uh, yeah, control X. Uh, control X. I cut it out. <laughs> it worked. I just touched my keyboard with it. Yeah, it should work. Yes. No, it's good questions. Yeah. Continue. Uh, <laughs> sounds actually like a, a warning sound. Suppose you you enter something and you want to close it. Usually in Windows, we see that the sound comes up a warning sound. Ah. So how how can we play that uh, file? You know what I mean. Sound is not swing. Sound is different. I uh, you'd actually have to build an op it it actually have to put the wave file or something in the application to do it or extend off of the operating system and then you're looking at MFC programming. So you're looking at getting the extension libraries and knowing what it is to do sound. Which I'm not gonna cover multimedia and sound because uh, we'll see it in the uh, we'll see it with the Android stuff but not so popular these days on a system for some reason in terms of development so but uh, that's a totally different concept <laughs> sound is not associated sound multimedia in general is not associated with MFC or coca or actually any of the AWT or swing components so it's come from a different library completely so. and, uh, yes last question um, yes since we are editing a file here a, a picture which can actually like a warning sign mm -hmm, can mm -hmm. show up uh, with the dialog box. Image so, icon. Yeah. So th is there any restriction? We can have a GIF file also? Or? Yeah, GIF, PNG, um, JPEG, mm -hmm. anything that's supported. Actually, anything that's supported on most web development is supported through Java. Um, Mostly in file formats. Also for the audio, it's the same rule. Depends on what library you have. There's a lot of third-party utilities out there that you can load in packages that you can load into Java that gives you a lot more capabilities with different file types as well, like um, S, what is it, SWF files and all sorts of different things <coughs> that you can load in. But you have to find the package. Usually, third-party library extension. Load the package in, and then you can do anything you want. So. All right, I'm going to end this one and start in with a new topic.